to the Minor Basketball Podcast, also known as MOB Podcast. I'm Evan. I'm Ja. And this is our basketball podcast where we recap, break down, and analyze players and teams from the previous games from the previous day. How are you doing today, Ja? I'm tired. <laughs> Sorry. I ain't even started like that, but yeah. But I, I'm getting I'm getting into my rhythm. I'm getting into my flow. That's good. You always so, tired. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna ever. It's gonna be rare that I'm not tired, man. I swear. Yeah, working with all the, all your family members over there. I mean, we are. Yeah, 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 yeah. move on. Oh, <laughs> uh, I want I hope everyone's having a good day. Over everyone, we'll have a good day. Uh, a lot of games, interesting games. None of them were televised, but some <laughs> interesting games nonetheless. <laughs> so let's just get the televised games out the way. First, starting off with the more interesting one out of the two, the Suns and the Pelicans did do battle in New Orleans, and this was a pretty good game in the first half. Uh, back and forth, fair. The Pelicans did have a good lead and had to lead at halftime, and then they just extended that by a mile. That's a disappointing man, disappointing men behind me. <laughs> uh, What's well, coincidentally, the people that I'm talking about always come from behind. Another disappointing guy that just entered the picture, but um. <laughs> Pelicans opened up that lead to a wide, wide gap, and they was able to win this one in convincing fashion. Yeah, um, just like what you said, um, it was it was a good game, a close back and forth in the beginning, aka first half. Um, the highlight of the game was Zion Williamson, and you yes. started off. I think he. Missed only I think one shot in that first half. Correct me if I'm wrong. One or two shots. I could be wrong. I forgot, but I know that he was highly efficient in that first half. But then you go into the second half and you saw that the Pelicans made their run. And again, playing the way that we're that that like you know we're used to seeing them play as that high octane, quick, athletic, you know, kind of fast break kind of offense that you usually see many teams play, and you've seen it just go on full display. Right at the second half, and just to be honest, the Suns couldn't do nothing about it. The Suns couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, they had no answer for Zion Williamson, who was just doing it all. He even he even got it. He even shot three. <laughs> who hasn't been playing well? He hasn't been well, not playing well outside, but he hasn't really be taking a lot of shots outside. Yeah. Um, in this season, as compared to last season, I know he can shoot. I I think anybody who watched on basketball know. That he can shoot based off how he played last year and his first debut. He hit like four threes against the Spurs. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he can shoot. Um, Brandon Ingram was right behind him in terms of scoring output, 23 for him. And he was yeah. um scoring as well, hitting down shots, getting his own look, creating space for himself as he always does. He's always great at that. He's been great at that, even when he was in LA. Yeah. And yeah, the third quarter was really really just the the game <laughs> that's really when it ended the pelicans run on that huge run the suns had no answer for them offensively or defensively and as a result pelicans were just able to get a blowout win there's really yeah. nothing not much that can be said about that after that <laughs> so yeah <laughs> pelicans win by 20 well, in convincing fashion what Oh no! I was gonna say, um, there, there's nothing else that needs to be said. Just like how there's nothing else that needs to be said about the next game that you about to talk that we about to talk about too. So, <laughs> yep, you're exactly right about that. But I guess we have to go over it just a little bit, you know. Uh, the Pacers and the Bucks played, even though it felt like just the Bucks played. Uh, <laughs> this was a interesting game up until the second quarter, in which the Bucks just completely smack the paces in the mouth from every facet of the game. Yeah. I mean, it, was, it wasn't even just a Giannis thing, even though he did have a triple double double. Um, Milton played well. Bobby Portis played well. Even he, he was doing really well coming off the bench for them. It feels like um, Forbes who had a good game out of nowhere, you know, and holiday. Yeah. yeah. What? Now I'm saying he had a rain and he had a rain in from three. Yeah. And Holiday had a great defensive game locking down Brogdon as you were. 
<laughs> said to me before the podcast, had him look like he was Dame in 2017. 2018. 2018. So just in all facets of the game, I mean, this was a great team win by the by the Bucks. And the Pacers really only man that really had it going was Sabonis. Yeah. Everybody else was out of sorts. Um, bad defensive play. They just got they just really got punched. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah, um, to be honest, um after that first quarter, it just looked like a scrimmage game. It looked like, you know, the Bucks was basically like, you know, just toying with the Pacers. Um, uh, um, again, just as you said, um, outside of Sabonis, nobody else had a really good game for the Pacers. They played hard, like what we used, like what we usually see from Indiana, but playing hard and playing hard can only get you so far if you can't like equalize the 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 output of what the opposing team is showing you, and the Bucks did that again. Giannis didn't have to do much, even though he had a triple double. Drew Holiday, great defensive intelligence. Um, Brent Forbes was raining from three. Chris mm-hmm. Middleton had it going. Bobby Parties had it going, and Brooke Lopez did his role, even though he didn't do much. He did his role for the team, and as a result, it was just like you know, it was just a full team effort by the Bucks. They didn't need to do much. They got they basically benched all their starters right in the middle of the third quarter so at that point so, and so we could just, yeah we could just leave it at that great win by the bucks a competitive competitive um defensive and offensive display by them just them the pacers yeah, yeah. It didn't really look like they had it going for them but maybe they can bounce back in the next game all right now let's get to the more interesting games and the more interesting parts around the association from last night's set of games. Uh, first, starting off with you, you have any games you want to speak about? Anything that you want to talk about? Um, I want to talk about. Uh, let, let's just acknowledge it. Um, the Mavs has finally been able to break their losing streak. I think they were on a six-game losing streak. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the Mavs, yes. Yeah, the Mavericks. They were on a six-game losing streak until until two players from the 2018, 2018 draft, like, you know, two players that were traded for each other were able to come out and have a duel for the ages with each other, man. Um, Trey Young and Luka Doncic had it going. And as a result, you could see it. But yet the Mavericks had a had an early lead. And then just like what we usually saw the common theme, they tend to like, you know, about to look like they about to squander the lead. But surprisingly, they kept it up. They kept it up. Even though the Hawks had a lot of fight in them and was able to take the lead at one point, the Hawk, um, the Mavericks came right back, did it again. And then as a result, they was able to close out the game. And they were able to go on that run thanks to Luca. KP had it going. Tim Hardaway was shooting, shooting the ball well. Like, you know, the, the Mavericks was finally able to, to get out of that stuff in which they could finally close a game after looking like they could never close games in the past moments. Yeah, very surprising. <laughs> and very surprising. I was uh surprised at how well they played in that fourth quarter. Yeah. Really, because as you alluded to, they really haven't been great at closing out games. And I felt like after Trey Young hit that deep, deep three, <laughs> pull up the footage, late in the fourth quarter, I thought, okay, now is this is where they collapse. This is the time. This is where the Hawks. <laughs> this is where the Hawks take the lead and win the game. But no, <laughs> no, that didn't happen. The Mavericks were able to stay, keep on the lead, and put on the pressure more, put the foot on the gas more, and able to close out this game. So, really, a really impressive win by the Mavericks. Something that we haven't said in six games because they haven't won anything. But a good win by the Mavericks. Disappointing loss by the Hawks. Yeah, well, they've been squandering leads for like you know those six games, so of course they, of course, mm-hmm. kind of happy to say something different for once. Yeah, um, this one lost for the Hawks, but I am glad to see that John Collins did have a great, great game. Yeah. All right. Um, as you said, that the Mavericks almost gave up the lead. Well, let's talk about from let's talk about a team that actually did give up the lead as the Heat and the Wizards did play in Miami and the Heat, yeah. full healthy Heat and the Wizards who didn't have Russell Westbrook playing in the game, you would think 
Oh, please. He got this, right? I mean, come on. Eastern Conference <laughs> champions? And they just went to the finals yeah. and gave the Lakers two losses, the most losses in a the series they haven't had the entire playoff run? Yeah. Piece of cake, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I thought so, too. And then <laughs> um, Bradley Beal, of yeah. course, who, by the way, set a record past MJ in which he set a record for the longest streaks of 25-point games to start an NBA season. Mm. I tell you, that's, I mean, this is a stat for everything. Like, what the, in the world, yo? <laughs> it's really a stat for everything, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but that, I mean, that is impressive, though. That, that 25 is impressive. points, start of season. Yeah, I mean, only Michael Jordan did that, you know. I mean, I know I know you own that team, but <laughs> Michael Jordan, like that's that's really impressive. That shouldn't be overlooked. Nah, it's, yeah, it shouldn't be overlooked. You know what I mean? Like the greatest to in our opinions, the greatest to do it, to ever do it. Um, like you know, and again, I always say the the game from a individual standpoint is always about getting the bucket, and that will always be the most important aspect about the game. And it's not easy to score in the NBA like that. So, except for if your name is Luka Doncic, of course it's easier. But outside of that, it's not really easy to even score 20 in the game. So, to score 25 straight, mm-hmm. that's good. Yep. But back to the game, uh, the Heat had a 13-point lead in the third quarter or 15-point lead in the third quarter. And they had yeah. the lead for the majority of the game. Yes. And then towards the end of the third quarter, the Wizards started making their run. Started hitting threes, started playing through Beal, started getting stops. And then in the fourth quarter, they just started raining. <laughs> yeah. And he was able to take the lead. And But the game wasn't dang even end there. As the Heat came back on them and had a chance to retake the lead and win the game, well, Gordon, Jordan Dragic, Gordon, Gordon Dragic oh layup, <laughs> and which was greatly defended. By I believe Davis um Davis Bertans, yeah Davis Bertans yeah yes. great defender and they had another chance to take the lead with a three, but Hero missed and shockingly, without Russell Westbrook, against a healthy Heat team now, the Wizards win by three. Well yeah well yeah yeah Let, let's just say uh, let, let's move away from the Wizards and let's talk about like how you know the the sun ain't shining on the South Beach right now man um like you know uh you got Mickey Mouse and Jurassic Park taking over and like you know it it, it just don't look good right now it just don't look good for the Heat look it I'm not gonna get on them much because I'm I, even I'm not gonna make no excuses. I am going to make a little bit of an excuse because of the fact that everything that has been going on in their season, they haven't been fully here yet, I feel like. Which is weird, right? Because that's the heat culture. The heat culture is always about mentality, right? But they haven't been here as of lately because of everything that's been going on. So this is just a bump in the road. This is like, you know, this is the, this is like, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, wrong since the beginning this is like their second time being back healthy since the beginning of the season fully oh, with dragage and all of them i believe so yes. yes like so like yeah we got to just um but um so yeah i feel like this is just a bump in the road but things need to change up quickly though because again it's a short season and we don't have they don't have much time they're already i they're still out the playoff picture, right? They're out the playoff picture, yes. They're not in the playoffs. But I feel like these wins, like, oh, um, I mean, I guess when they're not fully healthy because none didn't play, but you don't need none to beat the worst team in the league. Yeah. So, but <laughs> I believe, like, these are the games that they need because they need to get back into the playoff run. If they were holding it down, you know, kind of in that playing game territory, and, you know, okay, uh, I can excuse them for a little bit, but. I mean, they're 13th because of the injuries. So you need, we need, you need those games. It's still early, but we're 20 games into the season now. Yeah. So in a 72 game season. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You need to pick so it you up. Need, yeah. You need to start building up these wins now. Pick it up. But for the Wizards, eh, 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 you know the joke. <laughs> like what you told me off the air, <laughs> you know the joke, like, oh, 
So it has oh. to be no problem. <laughs> well, yeah, Royal Russ. <laughs> it has to be only one problem. It's it's Westbrook. Like you know, it's time for him to move on. He he's not the player that he used to be. Like you know what I mean. He can have a valuable impact on his team. Shut up. Well, like he's gonna be fine. And you like you know sometimes things just like just like, just happen, man. Don't do that. But like as a result, but good win by the Wizards, man. The, um, the, the, this is kind of a win that they kind of needed because like you know they only begin their wins on a team that's also in New York that plays on defense, like, you know, so like, you know, they needed something like this. So. Yep. Great win for the Wizards. And as you, I, as you said, a team in New York, let's stay within that um, state and <laughs> let's go to the other team in New York being my New York Knicks as they did battle against the Chicago Bulls, trying to get that win back from them from a couple of nights ago. And they came out and just, <laughs> <laughs> they came out with just brutal force against this Bulls team. Julius Randle with a hot start. He had back to back to back three pointers in the end towards the end of the first quarter, yeah. and they was as up as big as eighteen. Actually, as big as nineteen. And yeah. They were up eighteen in the fourth quarter, and Julius Randle had it going throughout the entire game. He was hot. RJ Barrett had a good game. Um, Alfred Payne also had a good game. Why is he? playing 34 minutes. I don't know, but he did have a good game. Emmanuel quickly didn't get as much minutes because of that. Yeah. Um, speaking of Emmanuel quickly, um, every time I watch him play, I feel like he has like two moves in his, in his bag. <laughs> he, he has a, he has a crossover off the high pick and roll three. Yeah. And he has a crossover blow by you floater. <laughs> yeah. He got to div- diversify that, but <laughs> Hey, if it's working, you and nobody's been really been able to stop it. Could you say much? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I hate. I mean, I love him man quickly, and I think he should, um, yeah. be starting pretty soon. Yeah. I think Tom Thibodeau should be, you know, grooming him and developing him into that starting role. That's why I don't think that Alfred Payton should be playing 34 minutes. But Alfred Payton did have a good game in this game, so I'll, I'll let it rock. For yeah. Now. But towards like for the future, I don't think Alfred Payton should be that playing that much minutes. You groom him into this role, you gain, give him a lot of minutes, and then towards, like, athlete all-star break? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's start him now. That's what I feel like. Yeah, uh, yeah, I like that process. I like that plan. They should go with it. And also, just to piggyback on what you said, he did say his favorite player growing to watch was Lou Will, and Lou Will, they always say in the scouting report, he loves to go left, but yet – it works. Nobody can stop it. It works. It works. Right. And I guess that's just him learning from one of his favorite players. Like, you know, if nobody's stopping you from your favorite moves, then just don't. Yeah. You're not wrong about that. Not um, you. If you, if you saw the score of the bulls in the next game, the bulls did win by four and they did cut the lead to lose three. In... Huh? Lose by four. You said win. Oh yeah. The bulls did lose by four. Sorry. The bulls did lose by four and they did cut the lead to as close as three in that fourth quarter, but that's just, you know, to make the score respectable. Um, <laughs> the, the Knicks really much had the, the lead and the win, yeah. like, in that second half. And as I said, they came within three, and then Julius Randle took over again, and they was able to win the game. Yeah, yeah, um, thing. I'm not going to lie, though. The, the Bulls came out like they didn't know how to play basketball. Let's just be honest with that. Um, again, you talk about defensively, the history of the Knicks just always been based on hardcore, gritty defense. And that's what the Knicks did in that first, in that first straight up the game, that first quarter. And that, and they threw the, it threw the bulls off for, for a twist. Cause they didn't know what they were doing. And that's the reason why the Knicks were able to go on that big run and maintain it for most of the game. Mm-hmm. Yep. Great win by the Knicks again, that went back against that Bulls team. And we'll see if they can get back into the playoff position because they had lost a few games yep. and I'm down. Um, real quickly, before we go into predictions, uh, another game that I want to talk about, the Kings and the Celtics played. Ken Walker did not play. So once again, Celtics are not with their three stars. But that does not stop for this being a competitive game. A back and forth ensued throughout the entire game. And... Towards the end, De'Aaron Fox did kind of take over a little bit and yeah, put up. Who's better, John Moran or him? <laughs> well, we people watch basketball. People watch basketball. Know knows the answer. 
But um, like I said, De'Aaron Fox did take over towards the end. Um, I also want to say Tyrese Halliburton has been putting up a really, really good young rookie season. I mean, he got a uh, Western Conference Rookie of the Month, yeah, I believe, um, for last month. And he's been playing really well. He's been playing really well off the bench for them. He's been a good shooter for them. He's been a good slash for them. He's been doing it all for them. So he deserves to get credit. Um, but the Kings, well, sadly for the Celtics, the Kings were able to win this game in a close battle. The Celtics did have a chance to win, however. They were only two wins within arm's reach towards the end. And funny, because Robert Williams, I believe, or Grant, no, Grant Williams was on the free throw line. They were down by three. He missed the first one, purposely missed the second one, bounced it off the front of the rim, got the rebound back, passed it to Tatum, who was in the corner. Yeah. It was contested, and I believe, pull up footage, Jalen Brown was open, and I think he should have made the pass. Didn't, took contested three, and missed, and of course, that was the game. But anyway, a good win by the Kings. And can Kings, please, please, please keep that same energy for the next set of games. <laughs> All right. Now on to tonight, tonight's set of predictions. Only a few games tonight, but some interesting primetime games to talk about. First, the Jazz or the Hawks? Um, Jazz. Jazz. The first primetime game that we'll be discussing features the Golden State Warriors, Stephen Curry, up against the Dallas Mavericks with Luka Doncic. Watch Luka and them score under this league. I'm going to go with Dallas. But I watch, watch them go with yeah, with Dallas, I'm going to go with the Warriors. The Blazers or the 76ers? 76ers. 76ers. The Rockets or the Grizzlies? Rockets, even though they got smacked in their last game. <laughs> they did get smacked against the um, Thunder. And Shot. the... I'm going to pick the Grizzlies, and they got smacked against the team that got smacked, the Pacers. <laughs> but I got the Grizzlies. And lastly, the last primetime game we'll be discussing in the last game of the night features a rematch from the Western Conference Finals. That, of course, is the Denver Nuggets up against the Los Angeles Lakers. Lakers. I'm going to go with the Nuggets. I think they pull this win off. I think they get a... A little upset, even though Tangled if they do win, I wouldn't be that angry at the Lakers. But, yeah, I think they can win this game. All right. Now I think it's time to wrap things up. Any final thoughts, John? Um, it's crazy how you say that about Tyrese Halliburton and everything, because I will always remember during the night of the draft that people were talking about the Knicks choosing him. Yeah. It's crazy because, like, you know, even though – because in my opinion, I didn't know – again, we don't know much about these plays in the draft really because we don't watch college ball whatsoever. But I would want the Knicks to get Obi Toppin and, like, you know – and, like, but I just kept hearing about somebody called Tyrese Halliburton. Tyrese Halliburton, I was like, who's that? I never heard of this dude before. And now it's crazy how even though y'all got quickly, who's really good, is this dude here in the West Coast now, he's making noise. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm not, I'm not going to attack the Knicks or passing up Tyrese Halliburton because I believe the jury's still out on Obi Toppin. Yeah. So we really haven't seen as much of him. He's been injured. He's been getting limited minutes. So I want to see more and more of him until I, you know, give my opinion. But that probably won't be until years down the road. Yeah. Um, but either way, like we, like you said, we got quickly. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I feel like, so, yeah, I feel like I didn't make a mistake. Yeah, no. Yeah. But, um... I think with all that being said, not the way, I think it's time to end it. So thank you guys for watching today's pod. Make sure you tune into tomorrow's podcast. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And also follow our, 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 our IG down in the description. <laughs> uh, you fine, bro. And once again, I'm Evan. And I'm Ja. And this was the Mind of Basketball Podcast.